Yo, what up, YouTube? It's your boy Penny LS1 checking in once again. I'm going to wire up my amp today and finally put the box in the Malibu. Um, as you saw, I rewired this. I took this wire off. Where to go? This right here. This was what y'all saw in that time lapse when I uh, tested it for the ohms. It didn't come in correct, so I had to redo it. This was just some old monster cable that I had laying around from, if you if you know what that is. This wire is old. It's probably not big enough, but we're gonna roll with it for now. So I've got it wired. I believe they call that a uh, parallel series because these speakers are a dual voice coil, but they're four ohm per coil. So I had to parallel them to make them two ohm and then series out the box to one ohm, something like that. So, but I tested it with my vote with the uh, multimeter. It's got the one ohm resistance. So this is everything I got that I need to install it. Someone uh, reached out to me and asked if I could do a video of the wiring. I mean, it's pretty simple, but I'll go over it. This actually, this one is for the, uh, this is for the Monte Carlo. This is for a one aught cable. So what I'm running in this one is four gauge. So we got oxygen free cable, four gauge. This one is going under the hood. It's a mini a &L fuse holder. And I'm running, it's got a 60 amp fuse in that because the amp itself has two 30 amp fuse, as you can see. And then this one right here is a, basically a distribution block. The reason I have this is because I was initially going to run an amp to my highs. So I was going to run the one four gauge in and then two four gauge out one to each amp. So I already have it, so I'm still going to use it for added security. You want to have one fuse under the hood and then a fuse in the trunk before the amp. That way if anything blows or anything short circuits, the fuse will pop before anything catches on fire. So now let me get over here to the car. I got to find a spot in the firewall to run this uh, power cable. I mean, a good thing is it's not too big, so I should be able to find a spot somewhere on driver's side underneath the dash where I can run it from the battery and down, down the little, the door sill. So, so let me pop the hood and see what, if I can find something. Okay, so rule number one, always disconnect negative terminal on the battery. So what I'm trying to decide or determine here is where I wanna hook up the this lug right here so if you look at this battery which a lot of new cars have these days you see all those fuses so this is the main post you don't want to use any you don't want to use this one or this one because it's tied into this fuse right here you can use this one because it's going to be going that way right you can use this one i'll probably use this one but you can use this one or probably that one I think that one actually is the same size. Yeah, see that one's actually the same size as this terminal. I would have to drill it out. So I may put it on this one right here and just run it just like that. But stay away from these fuses right here because if you connect to any of these fuses for your power cable, you may blow a fuse in your car. So just heads up on that. And then this is, I'm trying to find somewhere to mount this. So if I run that lug right there, then I'm gonna have to put this somewhere over here which I may have to make a bracket for. So, but first let me find somewhere down there where I can fish it through the firewall. I may have to take off this reservoir tank. So let me crawl under the dash real quick and see if I can find a spot for it, for the wire to go through. Okay, y'all, so I did get it through. I had to use this to pull it on the, on the engine side. But let me show you this hole. There's already a, see that right there, that wire? That's for the alarm, for the horn. So I'm gonna put a grommet on there if I can get this, if I can get this on there. But I just shoved it through there. Let me go on the other side. I used that uh, grabber tool right there to pull it through. And we got, we got action. So I'll put some loom on there. And it's perfect because it comes right here. Now this one already had a different terminal. So I was gonna use the smaller one right here. But this wire, I had pre-wired it for something else. So I may cut it off because I don't want to use this. So I'm gonna cut this terminal off and crimp this other one on here. So it'll fit perfect with this one right here. Actually, you know what? No, I don't need to do that because I gotta cut that off anyway. Yeah, so either way it don't matter. Cause I gotta use ferrules to put it in here. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse while I, while I do that. Hold on. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna let it cure before I put the wire in. So this is the wire that's coming up from the firewall. So this wire is gonna go on this side. 
right there. I'm going to cut this ring off, that ring terminal. And then this wire right here is going to go on the battery. I'm just going to keep closing. Oh, I had it open. Hold on, hold on. So this red wire right here is gonna go on this post right here. I'm gonna run it along here, zip tie it to this, come around here and right there. Oh, sorry, down here and right here. So basically, I'm gonna have it on like this, onto the battery. And then, so I'm gonna measure it right now so I can see how long I need to cut it to go on there. So. So let me measure that, hold on. All right, so I cut it a little long. That way I'll have some slack to kind of tuck it down like that and it'll go in right here. So let me take it inside and put the ferro. So basically the heat shrink is just to hold it, temporarily hold it in place. And then when you get ready to put it in the uh, I can show you right here. Like I say, this is the one that's gonna go in the trunk. So basically, you loosen this, and then this just slides in there. I think I need this, I'm not sure if I need this red one or this black one, but we'll see. Oh, it fits in the black one. So you just stick it in there like that. Let me loosen it a little bit more. So it just goes in like this, and then when you, when you screw down that right there, it'll crush on the side it'll end in, and then it won't come out. So then you just put the case on it. Up the wrong way. And you'll be good to go. So, so that's what we're gonna look like in the trunk, but this one is for under the hood. So, all right, let's go back over there and finish routing this wire. And then I'll, I'm gonna take the, the trim piece off on the dash, hold on. So I got the ferro mounted on. So I'm gonna cut this one and put this ferro on. And it's gonna go right here. Let me make sure I got enough slack. Hold on, I can't see it. I wanna make sure I don't, I'm not gonna be tight. <laughs> oh yeah, we good. I'll probably push it down a little bit. I'm gonna put some loom on this when I get done. Actually, I'll probably keep this whole, yeah, we're, we're just gonna cut it right here. What do I do with my cutters? Did I not bring them? I'm just gonna cut this right here. We we'll need that. And we'll look at the ferrule. We'll cut it back about that much. Copper. This is your main power source going to your amp. You see how fine those are? So yeah, this is good wire. It's nice and soft too. Put the ferrule on there. Perfect. We'll cut this one pretty long since we're under the hood now. Like I said, heat shrink is just to hold it into place until I crimp it into the actual terminal or the fuse holder. And it'll crush, it'll crush the sleeve into the wire. So you don't want to cover up too much of the actual ferrule, just enough to hold it in place. just like that let me put this on that's how it's gonna look and we got going loosen this let me tighten that up so it don't fall down here yeah i know i'm notorious for losing screws especially in the engine bay 
clothes and then we'll we'll go grab the amp and uh i'm probably just gonna mount the amp to the back of the seat for now and then i'll make an amp rack later but i want to make sure everything is working before i permanently install everything so so let's get these wires tucked and uh, we'll go to the trunk all right y'all so i got all the amp wiring done for now i'm just gonna mount the amp to the back of the seat i'm gonna build the amp rack later so i just want to get this box in here make sure everything plays and i gotta find somewhere to ground that's the last wire i gotta run is the ground so let me show you the amp so like i said I just mounted it to the back of the seat for now it's, it's secured got my power wire coming on the driver's side my signal and my turn on lead is on the passenger side so I got some four four gauge lugs these will fit right up in here so one for the power one for the ground I'm gonna crimp these on here real quick I'm gonna leave this wire long like this because when I make my amp rack it's gonna be somewhere over there in the trunk so let me get these wires crimped all right so let me show you why I decided to, to mount my ground so I found a little hole right here I went ahead and grind the paint off and I opened it up with my step bit. I'm gonna use this nut cert right here. I got it just where it'll fit in there. And I'm gonna use this bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clamp that down with my tool. And then I'll be able to just tap, I mean, I'll be able to just thread the, the ground right there. Uh, this is the tool right here. It's basically like a um, rivet tool, but instead of rivets, it puts in those nut certs threaded well threaded inserts is what they are and then you can put bolts instead of using a uh, sheet metal screws you can just you can use machine screws and that way you don't lose your, I haven't used this thing in a while so I got to figure out which one of these dies I need to put on there so basically you're just gonna crimp this into the metal and then I'll be able to thread that bolt into it so let me do it and then I'll show you all right so if I do this right see this the tool there's a little cert and I'm supposed to be able to stick it in here all the way through and then I might have to do it with two hands so let me do it with two hands but I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze it and then it's gonna crimp that fitting into this hole let me do that and I'll be back all right I think I got it see that so now I got threads and it's in there too so then I'll just take my, and this is an M8 by the way. So then I'll just take this and just screw it down. And this is an Allen head. You can put any, any fastener you want, but then you got a solid ground, solid. So let me get the wire crimped up yes. on it. So I got all the wires crimped on the with the lugs and heat shrink. So now it's time to connect them to the amp. So this end going to the frame or body ground. This going over here. So we got ground right there. And mind you, I don't have the fuse in there yet, so still safe. You know what, I better use the damn hand screwdriver before I break something. All right. Power wire. Battery plus. One more, I forgot to do the uh, the signal wire, I don't think I have. Really, these are the only three wires that you need to get your amp running. Power, ground, and turn on. Matter right or left, because it's mono. 
so we need line in we'll put we might as well just match white with white and then we'll put blue with red the base boost zero I don't have the tools to tune it so we're gonna do an old school style by ear for now uh, what's this the frequency we'll keep that down to 50 that's what I like 50 phase is on zero sensitivity that's what I want to turn down turn that all the way down to minimum and we'll gauge that as we when we put the deals in so like I said it's an M6 I think 1.25 and then it's an Allen head 6 mil Allen head so I'm just going to snug it up for now I'll tuck it later and make sure that I just want to make sure the amp turn look at that I can tighten it real good yeah yeah that nut cert makes all the difference there you go got a secure ground all right so let's go under the hood and put the fuse in and we'll turn the switch and tighten it in. so this will crush the ferro and keep it in place and this glue should be cured by now it's been in here for about an hour or longer you see it moving a little bit but it'll be all right all right so that's dang We'll do the same thing over here. We'll push that in. We'll tighten it down. Oh, that plastic is in there. Damn plastic shit. That clear plastic that was on the other side. Better get y'all. This was in there. <laughs> okay. So we had a little boo-boo. Now y'all see why I use this plate. See, it's, it's adhered to the deal, and I had this screw to it. Well, I stripped the dang on nut. So, yeah, it went in crooked. I'll be able to bolt it to that, and then I'll just be able to just run the one wire here and then the one wire out with a fuse, so. All right, okay, so we got the new fuse holder in there. Temporary one for now, because this ain't the way I want it, so. But what I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it on just to show y'all that the amp does come on. If, if it comes on, I don't, it might not even come on. I don't know. Let's see if I can get this on here. All right, y'all. So like I said, I'm gonna check back in with y'all tomorrow, but I'm gonna turn it on. This is the moment of truth. I have not turned it on yet. I just connected the battery just put all the, the connections back on the battery so this is a true first turn on make sure nothing is <laughs> make sure nothing blows up i guess and i still haven't even fastened this back in yet so we got action look <laughs> we got action baby yes sir so yeah, so I got everything hooked up right. As you see, the amp is on. So I got a program. Oh no, mistakes are still program. Hold on. So speaker's not in yet. As you can see, the box is not in the trunk yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in now, but I'll check back in with y'all in the morning. I just want y'all to see that the amp did cut on. So we good to go as far as that. All the wiring is done. So let me throw the box in there. And then uh, I check back in with y'all probably in the morning. Okay, so I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready, I'm finna close this video out, but I want to show y'all the formula that I'm going that I'm going to use to adjust my amplifier input level to match with the head unit. There's an app that you got to use. A lot of people that I've seen use it, they use it on their phone, and then they plug their phone up via um, either USB 
or uh, auxiliary or your aux cable to play the tone through the stereo. But since I have this smart radio, I just downloaded that specific app that they use. So I'm able to play the tone through here. Um, oh, snap, I closed it, hold on. The name of the app, by the way, is called the Ultimate Car Stereo app, this one right here. Um, so it's, it's an option on there, there you go. No, that's cone area. Where's the tone generator? Oh, here we go. So subtone generator. So you'll go into there and you'll see, you'll play a 40 hertz tone. But before you do that, you wanna, you gotta calculate your, what you want your, the votes to be. So what your, your end result is gonna be the number of votes because you're gonna use a multimeter to measure it. And you wanna know how many votes you need to measure on your multimeter as you're turning that gain up on your amp. So these are mine. Well, I didn't put the numbers on here, but. So you're gonna take your power rating, which is your RMS, don't use max. Power rating times your ohms load. So in my case, I'm doing, my amp does 900 watts at one ohm. So 900 times one is 900. And then you wanna take the square root of that, the sum. So the sum of those two, the RMS, I mean the power times resistance. Whatever the sum of that is, you wanna take the square root. So in my case, 900 power times one ohm is 900. The square root of 900 is 30. So as I'm adjusting my sensitivity on my amplifier, I'll be looking at my voltmeter. And when it gets to 30, that's exactly the sweet spot. And the way you wanna do that is you wanna take your test leads and you're basically just gonna plug these into your amplifier to the speaker leads. So bridge mode, power negative, uh, uh, positive negative, and then you'll be able to get a reading that way. So I'll do another video once I get it tuned, tone, I mean, uh, <laughs> adjust it. But like I said, this is what I'm gonna to use to do that. But make sure, like in my situation, since I have this DSP, I can just go into here and balance, turn off all of my door speakers. You wanna set your subwoofer gain all the way to zero. And you wanna flat, see this is my, my uh, the Hertz right here. I'm gonna set it as flat so there's no curve and you want to turn it all the way down so let me do that and then uh like i said i'll make a second video but right now as soon as i finish doing this i'm actually finna finish making the box for uh for the monty i got all my wood laid out i just got a couple more cuts to make so as you can see i got the front the bottom already cut out i'm gonna double back for that bottom but i've got my top back and my sides already measured out and then i got two interior braces and then over here is gonna be the, the double baffle for the front. I just got half inch for this piece since it's just gonna be like a beauty panel, even though it's a double. And then these are all three quarter inch. So all right, y'all, man, I wanna thank everybody once again for rocking with your boy.